Hi, I'm Tim, and welcome to Watch You Want. Thanks for logging on. Today, we are looking at the undisputed star of the Patek Philippe Sports Watch collection, also the star of Basel World 2014. This is the Patek Philippe Nautilus 59901A 001 Travel Time Chronograph in Stainless Steel. This watch combines essentially the best of everything. It combines three great threads of Patek Philippe history, that of the original Nautilus sports watch, the Patek Philippe Aquanaut travel time, and the Nautilus chronograph, the original chronograph Nautilus from 2006. It combines all of those with stainless steel, unarguably the king of sports watch materials and a favorite of the Patek Philippe collector circuit. Let's talk a little bit about those three great watches that lend parts of their history, identity, and aesthetic to this 5990. Then let's break down the individual features that make this one of the most fascinating and endearing Patek Philippe sports watches in years. And even beyond the high complicated dress watches, make this one of the most interesting compound complications available from Patek Philippe today. The thing is, the Nautilus is an icon, the eternal rival of the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak. Both of them were designed by the same great man, a legend in his own time, arguably the first celebrity watch stylist, the great Gerald Genta. Now, Genta designed both of them during the early to mid-70s, and they were revolutionary in their own right, both being extremely expensive stainless steel watches in a time when that was unheard of, when their makers were never known to have made stainless steel watches at that price point when the industry wasn't ready to accept a stainless steel watch at that point. Both of them featured incredibly intricate, detailed, and beautiful finishing that ennobled the steel metal itself by the amount of work that was wrought upon it. Integrated bracelets and cases, the two flowed together, and the Nautilus, in many ways, was the more fully realized of the two. If the Royal Oak was a first pass at the idea of a multifaceted stainless steel bezel, an integrated brace, integrated flanks of a case that flowed seamlessly into a bracelet. Really, the Nautilus took that Royal Oak concept to the next level, and coming from the pen of the same man, the pedigree was impeccable. Now, to this day, the Nautilus plays to a smaller, more upscale crowd. While both watches vie for the hearts and minds of collectors, there's no doubt that in terms of stature, Patek Philippe has managed to climb a rung above Audemars in most circles. To this day, Collectors will debate it, but at the moment, there's no arguing that Patek Philippe sits at the top of the haute de gamme shelf, and the Nautilus rides that wave. As a sports watch, it is everything you would want it to be. It's rugged, it's 120 meter water resistant, it's stainless steel, and it preserves all of the essential styling features of that original while adding complications that are the modern vogue with Patek Philippe collectors. Now let's talk a little bit about those complications and how Patek integrates them without spoiling the lines of the Nautilus. First and foremost, you have the travel time complication. Check this out. Oh, didn't see that coming. That's because Paddock seamlessly integrates the travel time local hour adjustment with the famed flanking wings of the Nautilus case. These look like features of the stainless steel package. They're actually actuators. And again, because their function is butter smooth and their aesthetic is completely seamless, transparent, blends into the case, Paddock's blended functionality and aesthetic excellence. Beyond that, you get the functionality of AM PM indicators right here at 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock for your local and reference time, respectively. And Paddock does a great job of breaking up the aesthetics of the hour hand for the local and the reference. If you are going to use the watch such that you don't need the reference time, you can actually, just like this, superimpose the two hands, and you can create a seamless look. Again, it's that aesthetic elegance, the ability to clean up the look of a complicated watch that is a hallmark of Paddock's design competence, and you can see that. Now it's just a conventional three-hand watch. Beautifully done, and you can see that because they've also gone for vertical and bilateral symmetry, the dial reads as coherent, symmetrical, uncluttered, despite the mass of complications, two time zones, two AM-PM indicators, a radial date, and a chronograph. Let's talk a little bit about that chronograph, because that's the other half of the complicated equation. Now, Patek Philippe gives you a chronograph that is in-house automatic winding. It is their own movement. It's the caliber 28520 CFUS, and it has everything that made the original 2006 Nautilus 5980 chronograph a breakthrough. That was Patek's first automatic winding in-house integrated chronograph. But it upgrades it with some modern 
shall we say, advancements and refinements that are subtle but significant and speak to the company's technological prowess. First and foremost is the Silicon Hairspring. The Spiromax Hairspring is a Patek original. Now, it was developed to essentially make the watches more accurate, immune to magnetism, more shock resistant, and also more resistant to variation on account of temperature. Now, Patek Philippe takes watches that are built with that technology and certifies them to run no worse than minus two plus three seconds per day, far in excess of Swiss COSC chronometer standards and among the very best in the industry, regardless of certification standard. Now, the watch is a pleasure to use. To press the chronograph pushers to stop right there, you get the sensation of a column wheel under the finger. That's the traditional way to actuate a chronograph. It's old school watchmaking. For all of its tech, Paddock knows that you need that tactile feel of a high quality product. It really speaks to the attention to detail that amidst all of the high technology, they remember it's still got to feel and sound and look good. And because of this pusher and column wheel combination, it does feel good. Reset it, resets perfectly to zero, and that's because of the vertical clutch. A vertical clutch is a coupling that moves up and down off the drivetrain. It doesn't mesh two gears that have play between them. It just moves the clutch up and down, so the chronograph is either moving or stopped, moving or stopped, and when it resets, it takes again that play of the gears out of the equation. So you get a watch that starts chronograph seconds without any stutter or stagger or jump, stops on the money, resets completely every time. So you have the feel of the column wheel and you have the precision of the vertical clutch, but you also have the finish that only Patek Philippe can provide. Now the great thing about this movement is that it's finished to a standard that is no less than, I would have to say, that of the industry, the standard of the industry. They are the leading house in terms of finish. There's a reason people don't laugh at the idea of the Patek Philippe seal. Some may scoff at Patek for eschewing traditionalism and discarding the Geneva hallmark, but no one can argue that Patek has lowered its standards. If anything, they forced the Geneva hallmark to raise its standards. And this was confirmed as in 2009, the year Patek went to the Patek seal, which, by the way, accounts for the quality of the movement, the case, the bracelet, and the dial, not just the movement, but that year the standards for the Geneva Hallmark were actually rewritten to now accommodate the dial and the case. Paddox is still more holistic, and because of the level of, stand of finish in tandem with the level of technology, it really does represent a higher standard total. Even the Geneva seal doesn't encompass the degree of accuracy that Paddock promises from its timepieces. They're not making any promises as to the accuracy of their movements at Roger Dubuis or Vacheron Constantin. That is part of the Patek seal. Beautifully finished with circular Cote de Genève, perlage that is intricate, that is detailed, that is perfectly overlapped with no asymmetry. There's no slop in this movement, either mechanical or visual. All of the beveling is to a mirror standard. All of the screw heads are black polished. There is nothing lacking here, and this movement holds up under a microscope. Everything you would expect in the finish of a Patek Philippe dress watch, you get in this stainless steel 5990 sports watch. Again, you're getting everything that makes a Nautilus great, with everything that makes Patek Philippe complications great. You're getting seamless aesthetic integration of multiple complications into a beautiful watch that wears beautifully on the wrist. And I would give you a wrist shot, but here's the secret here. This watch is being offered not just with everything you would receive from the Patek Philippe authorized dealer. This watch, having been purchased in February of 2015, is everything you would receive from an authorized dealer, including the warranty. This watch retains virtually the entire, barring a few days, the entire Patek Philippe factory warranty, and it is still sealed in the original plastic. Now, I'm not going to take it out. My wrist isn't worthy, but yours certainly is. Check this Patek Philippe 5991A-001 Nautilus Travel Time Chronograph out on our website, Watch You Want, with all original factory papers, documents, accessories, and the balance of Patek Philippe's factory warranty from the gorgeous contrasting brushed and polished stainless steel finished to the gorgeous integration, the seamless integration of so much complexity to that beautiful famed Nautilus gradient dial. It's all here. This is the total package. It's as good as it looks and it can be yours. Check out this Patek Philippe Nautilus 59901A-001 travel time chronograph at what you want.